Hi there, it's Simone. I'm here to share six currently inked pens. These pens I have inked over the last uh, two weeks and used. And um, I want to tell you what they are and how I like them. The first one is a hand turned pen from Little Pen Designs. It's the uh, Cadia model in the Stargazer finish. I put a um, zoom nib from The Good Blue on it and uh, shimmer ink inside from Diamine. This one is the Opus 88 with, I put the journaler, journaler nib from Estabrook on here and have it inked with Waterman inspired blue. This is the Sailor Pro Gear in Too Hot Habanero with a medium nib. I did a nib swap on this pen <clears throat> and I inked it with Dominant Industry Earl Grey Tea. This is the Benu Ambrosia in Brown Orchid with a fine nib. It is inked with Diamine Rider's Blood. Um, this is another Benu. This is the uh, Atlas exclusive Gold Coast model. And I think I have on here a fine nib. This is inked with Robert Oster um, Tea Time. And then the last pen that I have is the Lamy Safari, Safari Limited Edition 2024 um, Violet Blackberry. I had a gold 14 karat broad nib on here, but I swapped it out to the extra fine gold nib. And the ink that is in here is Diamine Raise a Glass. So, <clears throat> I have prepared a spread right here. And I just last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I made one for the other six pens that I had inked and I loved it so much. So I prepared another one. Now, as you can see, my stamping didn't turn out so great, but that is not going to stop me. The stamp set that I used is uh, from Everyday Explorers Co. It's the currently inked stamp set, I believe. So this ink is, I never thought I would like it as much as I do. It is a shimmer ink and I can already tell you that I wasn't able to see as much shimmer as I had hoped in writing. And to be fully transparent, I did not really use this pen much. And that has to do partly with my current preferences. So this is the Little Pen Designs. I'm just going to um, abbreviate that with LPD. Arcadia. In Stargazer. With a zoom nib from the good blue the ink <clears throat> how did i do that last time yep. this is diamine all the best it is the uh, day 25 ink so 30 milliliter ink from the 2021 diamine ink vent and here is downstrokes the zoom nib has um different line width depending on your writing angle as you can see if it's low it is uh broader feels like more like an architect and then when you hold it up almost at 90 degrees it's much finer so these are the lines like that and then let's do fine lines as well um <clears throat> overall 
my current mood seems to be fine, precise lines and dark inks. This ink is quite dark and I think it got much darker uh, since I put it in here. Let me check what the ink splotch and the writing sample looked like when I put it in. Yeah, this has also evaporated. <clears throat> it looks more like raspberry rose at the moment and it feels this has a little bit more magenta. Is it a little bit more red? But in the writing here and in the writing here, they look very similar. So I can say that this nib is not working for me right now. I don't see myself using this for journaling. I wanted to use this in my uh, creative journal, which I have right here. Let me open that up and show you. I think I actually did use it once. Yes, here. Oh, and it. And I also used it. No, that isn't this one. That is. It looks so similar. This is the other um, color, the raspberry rose. Um, I I was hoping to get a similar use out of this as the Pilot Parallels that I have used previously for titles and just um, fun, bold lines. But it's almost too narrow for me to to have that you know wow effect and then the shimmer ink just didn't let me there is not enough shimmer that's how it feels to me so this is a pen that i am going to unink right now uh, and not continue using then i used this uh, inspired blue let's see how dark it is so maybe I have talked about this prior to this video and maybe I have said it many times. I think my biggest fountain pen pet peeve that I have is um, pens where the cap sealing isn't good enough and then ink or the water of, in the ink evaporates and the ink color darkens in the pen. It doesn't necessarily have to have hard starts or even dry out. That is not the problem. I mean, that is definitely something that I don't enjoy. Um, but all, I'm, I'm not a fan when that happens. And I'm getting really aggravated when the pen exhibits these features. And so, oh wow, I was going to capitalize the pens. And this has the journaler nib. And this is from Custom Nib Studio. This is the person that grinds this nib. I purchased this secondhand. Um, and Estabrook sells these with their SDs. The ink is Waterman Inspired Blue. And you can clearly see how the dark, how the ink gets lighter as I write. This is the actual color of the ink. Inspired Blue, downstrokes, side strokes, and then this is what figure eights look like. Um, I do not. This is a very <laughs> unsuccessful currently. These pens and inks or nibs just didn't work well with each other. Um, I do not like when the 
the color. I'll just write color darkens in the pen. And what I have decided to do in order to be able to use this pen is to just use it for what I actually purchased it for in the pen. Pen, I will resort to parallel usage. I purchased this pen mainly to be able to swap the nib with the nibs from the Pilot Parallels and then put some loud shimmery inks in here and just have fun and play. And in that scenario, I don't really care if the ink is darker or not. I just want to see the bold lines. Um, in my journaling, I am, I'm really picky about this. It just, I don't know, it bothers me so much. But with uh, shimmered, shimmer pens and, you know, fun, fun experiences, this isn't a big, um, big thing. So what I uh, have decided to do moving forward is to just use this pen with my Pilot Parallels. And if I don't use Pilot Parallels that week, that month, uh, for a specific period of time, then that is not a problem because this is what this pen is for. <clears throat> the Sailor Pro Gear 2 Hot Habanero I mostly inked up uh, because I wanted to see if I wanted, if I liked the writing experience with the medium nib, and I totally do. Um, and I wanted to compare it to the journaler nib because I was hoping to get an appointment with uh, Gina Salorino of Custom Nib Studio and see if they would be able to grind this into a journaler nib. But I quickly found that Yes, I like the journaler nib, but I don't like it so much that I would want to um, change this nib. I really love how the sailor pens write. Sailor. And I prefer round tip nibs to these kinds of nibs. So it doesn't really make sense to change a nib that I really enjoy to make to make habanero. <laughs> I shouldn't talk with a medium nib. This is a 21K nib, too hot. And the ink that is in here is dominant. Wow. Industry. Earl Grey tea. I'm really glad that I tried this out and came to that realization yet again that I'm just a plain round tip girl and I don't feel bad about that and I just want to keep this pen the way it is. So this pen is perfect. As I said earlier, I re recently am drawn to the darker inks. So this wasn't used much. I'm looking forward to using it in my current writing journal and see how, how I enjoy writing with it there. And um, if this ink is still a favorite. I mean, this ink is a favorite. I will just get back to it whenever. Uh, I feel like a bold orange ink. So, now this might come as a surprise to you. This is the Benu Ambrosia, as I said before. 
in brown orchid with a fine nib and right now it works okay i just flossed the tines yesterday but oh man writer's blood is known to be one of the wetter inks one of the wettest inks um and it just totally dried up on me or it would just stop writing and it would get drier and drier the writing experience um <clears throat> with this ink when i put it in some pens i have a hard time even recognizing the color of the ink it just looks almost black not with this pen which is i i like that i can see the color of the ink but it just felt like such a dry writing experience so maybe the flossing of the tines Benu ambrosia brown orchid and this is a fine nib so i have this is interesting there's no breather hole on these smaller Benu nibs and I feel maybe that's the, I don't know. It would, is this the reason why they write drier? It, that doesn't really make sense to me, but if that would be the case, can you see how, how it, when I used this ink in other pens, it would like, more like these inks, they just like fall onto the paper. On here, with this pen right now, it doesn't happen like that. And I'm just wondering why this is happening. Um, so either the tines are too tight and I need to floss them again. I also have the suspicion that I am using the Caveco cartridge. I think what I want to do is use a flushed out regular international short cartridge again and see how that influences the ink flow it just feels so odd to say that this pen and ink combination can you see how light it is it was so dry Not my favorite. Here, it seems like it's starving and there's no flow happening. So I'm I'm not really sure. Let's just check what this here. So it is seated on the here. That is not the problem. So there is contact between the cartridge and the feed. But yeah. I, so my plan with this is I'm obviously going to empty this out after I'm done with this video. But what I'm thinking of doing is I'm uh, going to soak this in some ink pen flush and see if maybe there is some dried up ink or something in there. Make sure that is clean. Um... I want to floss the tines and I want to use a different cartridge next time that I use it, which I hope is going to be sooner rather than later, um, so that I can get to the bottom of this issue because that is just not usual behavior for this ink. <clears throat> then we are at this next pen and ink. As I said, this is the Benu Euphoria. So definitely, I also have to clearly state that I really like the Benu Ambrosia, but I love the Benu Euphoria. Um, this is my favorite Benu pen of all times. <laughs> oh, I need to clean the tip of my brush so that I don't get any red contamination in here.
also just saying this notebook is Cosmo Air Light Paper and I am very much looking forward to the end of the year when I can switch to Tomoe River paper. The benefit that I saw in this was that I could use both pages, both, both sides of the paper. And as much as I love that, it does not live up to my expectations. It's so fuzzy with all the things like hand oils, ink stamps, stamped on one side and then disturbing the structure on the other side. So if I was going to write on here, my pen and ink would perform differently than on regular, on the regular side. So that is so annoying. Pinu, euphoria. Uh, I just... I just really love these finer nibs at the moment. I don't I don't know why that is right now that I'm just so drawn to those Robert Oster tea time. This is very similar. I think when I swatched it I actually made a writing sample swatch of hanging rice that I also had inked recently here uh, next to each other on this paper. There is slight differences of the color performing on, on various different papers. On this paper, tea time is just enough different to hanging rice to justify having both. This looks to me more swampy. There's more yellow in this ink than in here. This is a little bit more grass, more green. There's a pen swatch. So yeah, and I love them both. So I'm really happy to have this inked. This was awesome. It had great flow. It wasn't super wet. Uh, good flow. Let's say good flow. Good flow. Loved the color. And then lastly, we have this Safari with Raise a Glass. This is the 2023. A 30 milliliter bottle from the ink vent from Diamine. And I don't know. I don't know about this. I actually, I like it, but then when I write with it, it did not perform well in this pen. So again, this is another pen that I'm going to unink and clean out. And just with the all the best the shimmer isn't isn't there i don't need a ton of shimmer dumped onto my paper but i what i would love is a consistent distribution over the whole writing maybe that's too much to ask of us shimmer ink i feel like i'm writing the words in different in, in the wrong order Blackberry Violet? Yeah, totally, for sure. And no, I'm not going to refilm this extra fine. This is just how it is. The ink is diamine. Raise a glass. I had the same issues with this pen and ink combination as I had with the Bennu Ambrosia, which is that when I, I, I would write maybe a quarter of the page and it would flow okay, and then I, it would kind of starve out. Um, and then I primed 
the feed and then it would work again but then it would again start to feel draggy on the paper and just didn't there was no grease ink in between paper and nib so that it would glide well okay so this pen didn't work with a broad nib for me ink flow was not good not sure about the color yeah i don't know i it's interesting that the longer this took so maybe i'm just pickier about the whole experience because i had such so many good pen and ink combinations in june july that now that I'm coming towards the end, I'm extremely picky about how my experience is supposed to look. But these two weeks weren't super successful. Um, I would say out of these six, these two, so the Sailor and the Benu, are the, are the ones that I'm I'm going to keep inked. The other ones I will clean out and put a, put to the side. And that's not a lot. That's basically two, one third of those pens um, stood the test of time, basically. Um, yeah, so I, I'm also not so sure if I want to keep this color. It's, I really like dark purples that present as black um but i'm not sure that this ink is it so maybe i will have to look a little bit further i remember that i didn't enjoy um what was it lamy azurite that i also had in the um, benu ambrosia brown orchid with a fine nib and i had a similar experience so there's something not working well with this pen. I This is more blue than the Violet Blackberry, but it gives me similar vibes. Um, where is the Lamy Violet Blackberry? Is here, somewhere even further ahead. Nah, that's also not similar, but when it, the sheen on these two is very similar maybe that's what makes me not enjoy it i'm i'm not ready to let go of this ink bottle just yet uh, but i'm definitely considering it so yeah i think that's all i wanted to say about my currently inked pens it felt anticlimactic for sure um that i just didn't get along with many of those pens. I was highly irritated by the darkness of this ink, so I tested all the pens that I have inked um, yesterday and just wrote test and then did some squiggly lines to see if the color would change. And you can, you can, these are the ones that I just showed you here, so it's definitely in the same order for sure. Um, the all the best, I think, in general, got a tiny bit darker than it used to be. The inspired blue, maybe it's because when I when it darkens up, uh, then it looks more like palette Iroshizuku Konpeki than inspired blue. This is what I expect inspired blue to look like. This is more like Konpeki, and I have that actually as a somewhere here. So this is what this ink looks like when I start writing with it. 
and then it starts to be more like inspired blue over here and it just it irritates me no i there might be people that have no problem with this this is the most irritating thing about fountain pens for me that i have found and so, um, of course, I am looking for that then now. And of course, I I actually have sold pens because this is happening. The Earl Grey Tea, I think maybe in the test there is a little bit darkening, but not much. The Writer's Blood is pretty consistent. Same with the Robert Oster which is interesting. So I have the little pen designs. This is a hand turn pen that had a, an okay ceiling. The Opus 88. I mean, I had this valve open all the time, but is this the reason why it would evaporate? Would it not do the same thing if I had closed it every time before I used it? But wouldn't there still be ink in the feed? So if, if that's something that you know, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious to know. But obviously, this pen doesn't seal as well as others. Um, and that's why I'm resorting to using this for my Pilot Parallels. I'm not going to sell this because this works for what I purchased it for. I just thought I could use it for other things. I guess I won't. Um, the Sailor Pro Gear, I already put, these are the pens that are still inked. So here you can see these ones. I put it here, the um, Sailor Pro Gear. I, I don't think it, so that's what I was getting at. So the, the Pro Gear, is definitely a pen that I can use and that I can have inked for a while that doesn't change the color. Um, and then same with the two Benus. Both of those stood the test of time. I don't think, I think I used it once this last week for journaling. Otherwise it wasn't touched until yesterday and this is how it performed. So I think opening it and then just using it right away and having the color be what I expect it to be is awesome. This is the Raise a Glass. And you can see here on the Tomoe River paper, it just doesn't, doesn't perform well. And these are all the other pens that are in here. This is the Sailor King of Pens. It was wet, so wet, <laughs> almost dripping out of the pen. Um, but it stayed the same color. Here we have, I, I had... Different experiences last time with a Lamy, but this Lamy Alex presented the correct color right away, which was awesome. Same with, I think this is the Bone Crusher 7 Studios. This Gravitas pen definitely did not stand the test of time, so I had to do squiggles and wiggles. And here we go again um, from this really dark, almost black, more looking like writer's blood than raspberry rose for multiple lines to be able to get to the color that I would like. So what I'm thinking about is definitely not using the Franklin Christoph. Uh, seek medium nib on here. One thing that is definitely good is that it didn't dry out, so that's that's a thing. Um, the uh, Waterman Karen performed really well. Same with the Pelican, and then I think in general this ink has lost some of its water and is dark. I. I wasn't sure what the original color looked like, but I think this is how it looks. Uh, but this has been inked since June. And so this is definitely something that I would be
be able to keep inked for a long time, which is awesome because it's a vacuum filler that takes a lot of ink. And if you want to write it dry and your ink properties change and the color changes over time, I, that's a no for me, as you know. And so that was something that um, is really important to me. And I'm glad that this pen worked. Now, this I'm going to talk in a different video about. Um, it did not stand the test of time, but... It's not my pen, so it's not really that problematic. I hope this was interesting to you and you have some fun new inks to try, maybe some combinations that you wanted to check out. Let me know your biggest fountain pen pet peeve that you experience when you use your pens. I would love to know if there is something like that. Um, I think I can look over most things but this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye.